I used to go to wrestling matches with my brother. I'd shout so loud I'd lose my voice. When I come to church, if I haven't shouted loud enough to lose my voice, then I ain't lived yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Same as the race. Praise the Lord. Might as well. Might as well get happy. Yes. Now, I know some of you are reserved. I realize that. <laughs> some of you are very, what do you call that, subdued. I realize that. I thank God for you. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> if you're subdued or if you're happy, if you jump up and down, if you sit down, it doesn't matter to me at all. It doesn't matter to any of us. We got our eyes closed worshiping God anyway. It doesn't make any difference. Ain't that right? Yes. Good. That's right. There is, in Christ Jesus, there is neither bond nor free, male nor female, barbarian, Scythian, bond, free, Democrat, Republican, uh, in between, Amen. out there, not so much, I don't know, right wing, left wing. We are all one in Christ Jesus. The only right. thing that makes us one, the only thing that'll bring unity to our city or our country is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. That is the thing that brings people together. Politics won't bring people together. Um, social things don't bring people together. Fighting with people doesn't bring anybody together. It just doesn't. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings people together in oneness. Look around here. Oh, yeah. Not much I mean, bring people together right now. Well, there's some long hair, some no hair, some coats and ties. People finally coming around. Looking past the hair right straight into the eyes. People finally coming around. And people in this place, we know that we used to be sinners. Not that you ever sin now. God forbid. No, God forbid. That you're pure and holy and righteous now that you don't sin. Now that once you're in Christ Jesus, now you don't have any troubles or problems. Hallelujah. <laughs> you guys are funny, man. You just don't rebuke me at all. You didn't throw nothing at me when I was saying that stuff. So all you guys are holy like that? Yeah, we believe you. We believe you. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> Turn with me to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. We'll start in Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Next week, we're going to come together Sunday night in an E412 meeting. That means we're going to be five or six churches together here. We're going to sit all the pastors up front and they're just going to sit down and, and talk. Amen. A round table? Yeah, more or less. We're going to talk and then, and then prophesy and, and minister in the Spirit. And you guys get to prophesy and minister in the Spirit, whatever happens at that point in time. But it's really a blast. Next week at six o'clock at night. On the night. On the night. Right here. We'll probably be outside. We're gonna figure it out. I'm gonna look tonight at six o'clock and see if it's just like really terribly bad here. No, or we she might do perfect. it in the yard. We'll set it up. We'll have some worship. We'll be praising the Lord, and then we'll. It's it's really fun. If it doesn't sound fun, it is. But. Uh, so it's reaching summer. It should be fairly light till like 8 o'clock. Yeah, to 8 30 almost. Isaiah 58. What about tonight, Pastor? What's Twitter? Tonight we'll, tonight we'll be here at the church. In there. There we go. Hey. Oh, that didn't work. Is that it? Yeah. I don't know how to run this. I need a uh, map. So Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that brings us together in one place. We thank you, Lord, that each one of us in some way experienced you, not only by your spirit, but by your word. And so we pray you take your word today and let it change our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Next Friday, Friday, from Friday afternoon to Sunday afternoon, we're gonna fast and pray for our nation, for our city, and for the meeting, okay? We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to come against the spirit of uh, propaganda and communism that's trying to raise its ugly head in our nation again. Yeah. And so we're going to break that, break that thing and pray against that thing. 
And if you've never fasted and prayed before, you don't, uh, there's, a, there's something that happens, not only in your life, but in other people's lives when you fast and pray. We don't get religious about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to do it. You don't. You can do whatever you want. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's routine and order it isn't going off. I got it. That's better. Yeah. 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 Better. Okay. And so in Isaiah 58, we're going to read a little about fasting. And then we're going to go into Isaiah and, and lit, learn about the gospel of Christ in the Old Testament. Okay? You like that all? Yeah. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Hallelujah. Might as well, right? We're in church. Yes. <laughs> well, this isn't a church. I was going to wear my tie this morning. Why? Because it's... <laughs> Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression, the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice and they take delight in approaching God. Watch this. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day you fast, you find pleasure and exploit your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate, to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. So I want you to know on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're not fasting so God will hear us. Okay? God hears you because of the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross. Amen. That's why you're accepted. God hears you all the time. Yes. So we're not trying to twist God's arm. Right. Okay? We're fasting to make our hearts right before God. I pray, Lord, that you touch those people right now. In Jesus' name, protect our first uh, responders and the people they're going after in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. So these people were doing the do's. They had their religion thing down. They're going to church. They're approaching God. They're seeking the Lord. Shabbat, Shabbat, you know, things like that. Okay. <clears throat> so look at here. You will not fast, you do this day, as you're, to make your voice heard on high. Now watch what he says in the fifth verse. It says, Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush? You know, like uh, a cattail? And to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? I want you to know that that's exactly what happens to me. When I fast, <laughs> I'm afflicting my soul, baby. Because <laughs> I get a lot of pleasure out of food. And when I don't eat, my soul is afflicted. Angry. I don't know about you. I haven't, I haven't sat in ashes, but I have got dusty on days I fasted. So what he's saying is, in John 10, Dennis says, uh, he has come to give us life. Yes. Isn't that more abundantly? Okay, so all of our lives aren't fasting and prayer. All of our lives are full of joy and happiness and power and peace and truth. But these days when we come together to seek God for something, because, you know, there, there's a few troubles in our nation. There are a few troubles in our world. Okay, so we're going to fast and pray and seek God for those things. Uh, all through the Old Testament and the New Testament, they sought God for things and God answered them. Go figure. Just go figure that. I mean, God just answered them. God came to the rescue. Look at Jehoshaphat and his buddies. You know, three armies were coming against him. Remember last week? They fasted and prayed and sought God. And God answered them and said, Dudes, you won't have to fight in this battle because the battle's mine, not yours. But I'm not going to go into that because I went into that last week. Okay. Now here we come, this is it. In the sixth verse it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Isn't that good? Oh, hallelujah. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Mm -hmm. And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourselves from your own flesh, 
Some of us at this point in time are hiding ourselves from our own flesh, from our own families. We've forsaken our families, we've forsaken things. Well, I've talked to my sister in 40 years, not about you by God. Not ain't by God, no, no. I'm proud of it too, unfortunately. Yeah. And proud of it, yeah. Unfortunately. And then your light shall break forth, what, watch this, that you hide yourself. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. Anybody carrying a burden today? To let the oppressed go free. Anybody know anybody that's oppressed? Yes. Hallelujah. You fast and pray for them. Yes. Something might just let them free. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, did you break every yoke. Um, uh, the Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I will give you rest. Here promises here if you fast and pray. Now watch this. Now, this is good. Okay, so this is a fast that he have chosen. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall bring, spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Woo! Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. You ever pray and pray and pray and just seems like God ain't listening or your prayers aren't getting through or something? Sure. Sometimes you need to just humble yourself and fast and pray for a day or two. And all of a sudden your prayer, you know, it's, it's, it's such a supernaturally natural thing. It just all of a sudden happens. Amen. And then you look back and you go, wow. Amen. Whoa. God answered my prayer. Yeah, I prayed that. Whoa. I didn't think that seed would sprout. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't think that seed. You know, it's interesting about seeds. <laughs> Sometimes we, we lose things or somebody steals from us. Take your loss and sow it as a seed. Then look for a harvest. Exactly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just take your losses and sow them as a seed. Don't get bitter. Don't get angry. Don't get weirded out. Just go ahead. Ah, sow that as a seed. God bless it. Lord, I pray that that seed would take root in Jesus' name. Bring forth a harvest for me, Lord. Otherwise, you're griping and complaining about stuff and all oh, those people treating me bad. It's just no good, dirty, rotten dog. I ain't never going to let them in my... Oh, watch this. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I go on and on. <laughs> this is it. If you call the Lord, He'll answer you. You shall cry and He will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness. Isn't that good? I, I read down here, the yoke refers to all forms of political, economic, and social injustice. Take away from you the yoke. The pointing of the finger refers false to false accusing people who, with fear tactics that come against you. Anybody been coming against you with fear tactics? Or in the news with some Yes. Speaking wickedness refers to stirring up trouble. You know those kind of people. They're poo-poo stirrers. That's what they do. That's what they do all the time. That's their thing, you know, that's their thing. If nothing's happening, they just stir it up. You know, so and so. You know what? You know, huh? Guess what? Huh? Yeah, I know. Hmm. I mean, he could just, they just do that and pretty soon you're going, yeah, no goods. Yeah. Okay, so you take away from these things, the, the, take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, you extend your soul to the hungry, that means your, your mind, your emotions, your will. When's the last time you really were really sorry that somebody is actually going to hell and you have a chance to tell him about Jesus? When's the last time you really cared about somebody enough to, to love them enough to talk to them about the Lord? Because what they need is Jesus. What the world needs is Jesus. Absolutely. They need forgiveness for their sins. They need a removal of their guilt and their shame for their past life. Yeah. That's what the world needs. Yeah. Whatever whatever people are going through right now and what, however they look and bad, what they're looking for is forgiveness and love. <laughs> they are. That's what folks are looking for. I never was one of those guys. I was, I was a wimp, you know. <laughs> Not really. I was probably, I don't know. My past is my past. Thank God it's in the past. Yes. Okay. Amen. So if you extend your soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. 
The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You should be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build up the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach. Woo! The restorer of the streets to dwell in. Wouldn't you like to be called that? Hallelujah, that's, that's the deal. You're the ones that bring unity to your town. If you do these things and begin to function in them, watch this as we fast and pray. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should go home and read that over and over. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> just read it over and over and over and just find out what it says. Now, I'm going to find my notes. They put them somewhere, I think. I got a paper here somewhere. Behind you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. That ain't it. No, it's in here somewhere. If it's not in here, I'll probably find it anyway. So go to Isaiah 35 with me for a minute. Where's that? Oh, I had it. Joe, what'd you do with my paper? <laughs> Isaiah 35. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, good. Isaiah 35, I think it's, uh, Thirty-five, yeah, there it is. Oh, three and four. It says, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, the Lord your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, and he will come and save you. Mm -hmm. Say to the fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Are you fearful hearted today? I want you to know that God will save you. Hallelujah. He will come with the, with, the, with, the, with the recompense of God and save you. Okay, go to Isaiah, the first chapter. We'll just go through Isaiah really, really quickly here. This won't take long because I haven't preached a long sermon in a long time. That guy in the back says, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. In the uh, oh, it says oh, this is good. It says here. I want to go up just a bit. It says in the sixteenth verse. It says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. If you have been uh, doing bad things for the widows and doing bad things to the fatherless, and re anyway, come let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you should be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Some of us in this room probably think that you have gone too far. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. This is Old Testament, come on. Mm -hmm. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Mm -hmm. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And what are we supposed to be obedient to? The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by what they believe, not by what they see with their eyes or or get too, too hung up on okay we got to watch ourselves now in the sixth chapter of Isaiah and I'm gonna read the first to about the eighth verse it goes like this in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and his train of his robe filled the temple 
Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings and two covered his face, two covered his feet, two he flew. But one cried to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken and the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke and said, listen to what Isaiah says. Woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. This is a prophet of God, the prophet of God in those days. Mm -hmm. And what does he say about himself? I am undone. Yes. I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Have you ever said this about yourself? Why did he say that? Because his eyes had seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with palms from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. Isn't that good? Yes. You notice there, we found this out a couple of Wednesdays ago, that an angel of God had to take that coal with palms yes. from the altar so he didn't get burned but he touched the guy's mm -hmm. mouth with it. Just thought I'd throw that out there, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now listen what happens after this. Also I heard a voice, the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. You see what happened? Mm -hmm. When the guy knew he was cleansed, when the coal touched his lips, in other words, when you're washed in the blood of the lamb, the first thing you start asking is, God, yeah. send me. Yeah. Here I am. Before you're going, oh, oh God, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. I'm going to die. I know, God, you're going to kill me. I know I'm bad. You're going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Then he's saying, send me. Tell mm -hmm. you, when you know you're forgiven, you know you're forgiven. Yep. Things start happening after you're forgiven. Hallelujah. Everybody know they're forgiven? Yes. Go to the 8th chapter. This is the gospel preached in Isaiah. I want you to know this. In the 8th chapter, it says in 19 and 20, it says, And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who, whis who whisper and mutter, Should not my people seek their God? Should they seek the dead behalf of the living? Through the law and through the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. In other words, if people start speaking to you other things than the word, they're speaking lies to you. I want you to know a lot, rat poison is 98% whole grain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. A lie, that's right. A lie is usually quite a bit of truth in it. And then they drop that one piece of deception in and it nails you. That's why we're in the Word all the time. That's why you don't get deceived. In the 30th chapter, go with me to the 30th chapter. Oh, this is good. Isaiah 30. This is what we get to do. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved, and in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. He doesn't say in, in fasting and praying and doing more for God and praying more, going to church more right, and reading right. the word more. He says in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Confidence in what? Come on, man. Isaiah 35. You were just there, huh? This is good. It says, a highway shall be there in the eighth verse. A highway shall be there in a road, and it shall be called a highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks on the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Remember that song? I've been a fool and a little child. I'm glad because I've been both of those. Never mind. <laughs> No lion shall go there, nor shall ravenous beast go up on it. Shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. With everlasting joy on their head, they shall obtain joy and gladness, 
and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I don't know if anybody else likes that, but I like that. Sorrow and sighing fleeing away. Okay, Isaiah 59. We're just about done here. Isaiah's 59th chapter. And we are we are called to prayer, right? We are called to cry out for our nation. Yes. For one another. Okay, now watch this. In the ninth verse it says, Therefore justice, this is the people talking, therefore justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there's darkness. For brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the twilight. We are as dead men in desolate places. We growl like bears. We mourn sadly like doves and look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it's far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you. Our sins testify against us. Our transgressions are with us. And for our iniquities, we know them. I like that uh, we grope for the wall like the blind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about you, sometimes of late, I've been so screwed up. <clears throat> There's a spiritual war going on. Yes, absolutely. Spiritual war going on. If I don't get up and spend some time with God by about 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm goofed up. I'm walking along like I'm blind. It's like I have my eyes half closed. There's no focus, I, not even physically, there's no focus in my life. But when I get up and spend that time with the Lord mm -hmm. in His presence, mm -hmm. something happens to me, my eyes become open, mm -hmm. and I can see stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that like for you guys? Yes. Amen. Good, I'm glad I'm in the same yes. good crowd here, because sometimes I just cannot function. And I, I'm thinking, I, I, I be putting stuff together that doesn't even matter, or try to fix stuff that doesn't get fixed. I hate that. I'm a fixer guy. Okay. <laughs> then at the end, right there in the 15th cha chapter, in the 15th verse, it says, So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. In other words, if you start trying to turn away from evil, your friends will hate you. The ones who really love you will be patting, on, patting you on the back and saying, Go for it, dude. Okay. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice and saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him. His own righteousness, it sustained him. Whoa, hallelujah. The Redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from transgression, Jacob says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time on and forevermore. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Hallelujah. Diamonds shine the brightest, for on their black velvet. You think the earth is dark? Shine! It's easy to be a Christian nowadays. If you just do a couple things right, everybody's go, whoa, cool, dude. You know, it, it's not so hard. It used to be really hard because everybody is about half good. Now everybody's trying to be bad. Now it's easy to be good. Seems like it. The Gentiles shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They shall gather together. They will come to you. Your son shall come up from afar and your daughter shall be nursed by your side. Hallelujah. I just, I'm just going to stop there. What I was thinking this week, as I was doing this, I'm realizing, and Mike and I have talked about this and others have talked about it, what, what we have lacked in our Christian life is, the, uh, is love for people. Is love for people. Love for those people who we cannot love when they're just nasty folks. Love for people that you just don't like. You don't have to like somebody to love them. That's right. I'm serious. You don't have to like somebody to love them. You can love somebody, bring them to Christ, nurture them, build them up, and never like them. 
<laughs> it's true. Yes. It's true, but if, if, if they truly get changed, then you might like them because they changed. But if they never change, it doesn't matter. You still love them. You get the idea, right? Yes. So what has happened in my own life, uh, I used to almost every day go and tell somebody about Christ. I ask God every day, Lord, show me somebody I can talk to, talk to about you. And I haven't done that for a little while. So I'm back on it. I'm back on it. Next week, as we come together at E412, uh, that, that day I'm going to preach some messages about evangelism. Evangelism is just leading people to Jesus. Now you people are, are pretty radical. And there are some that say that all you have to do is love somebody. Okay? Just love them. Just love them. I want you to know if you feed people because you love them, if you clothe people because you love them, if you counsel people because you love them and never tell them about Jesus, they're just going to go to hell warm and full yeah. and sane. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So love, love to be complete has to be to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that's going to bring us together as a nation, as a people. It's the only thing. You, you Come to me and talk to me about this if you don't agree with me. I think Christianity is the only worldview in the world that works. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because I looked at it. I've searched it out. I've looked at worldviews throughout the, the world. And I've done a couple of them. I've been, a, I've been the meditator, I've been the bhakti yogi, I've been all those people, the Eastern religions and things like that. I've tried them. They don't work. Oh, but, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. They do work. The meditation does work. It causes you to more, be more peaceful. Things like, I want you to know that if your sins aren't washed away, you ain't got nothing. doesn't matter. God is holy. In order to stand before a holy God, you must be clean and pure. Mm -hmm. The only thing to make you clean and pure is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. So if you don't know him today and you want to know him, you can come up here and we'll pray for you. And you can know him today. Guilt gone. Shame gone. Sin gone. Woo! Glory to God. I like that stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, yeah. That's good. Man, I'm going to ask you. Go ahead. Will you go back to Isaiah 1 and read number 15? Sure. To start the command of 16. Yeah. Okay. He's talking about them doing their appointed feasts, the new moons, and all that stuff. And then he says in the 15th verse, When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. They were doing all the religious things, mm -hmm. but never got to the point. And look what he says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. We sang the song, there is power, power, power in the blood. Would you, for your sins, be cleansed? Put away the evil of your doings before. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. I don't know about you, I tried that all my life. It didn't work until I came to Christ. I tried to do good. Read Romans 7 sometime. But the things I wanted to do, I couldn't do. The things I really didn't want to do, that's what I was doing. Yes. The things I really hated, that's just what I was loving. Oh God, who's going to deliver me from the body of this stinking death? <laughs> You know, and that, that means that, that that connotation there is a guy, they used to strap a body of the guy they killed, strap the body to their, rope them to their bodies and made them carry them around. Who will deliver me from the body of this death? It's a terrible thing to carry around guilt and shame and sin. And you're right, no matter how religious we have been, no matter how religious we are now, without Christ and without His shedding blood, we can't be free from fear or shame or guilt. I decided against guilt this week. I decided against it because I'm a condemnation guy, you know. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I like to sin. Yeah, I wasn't really sorry. I just wanted God to think I was. <laughs> That's a problem, Trevor. Yeah. That's a problem. So I decided against guilt. What God is telling me, just repent instead of coming back to me and 
feeling guilty. You know, <laughs> it's just so stupid. I, you know, I kind of got now. I have I have blown it a couple times since then, but I don't come to him with this deep remorse for what I've done. <laughs> I come to him as father. I hated what I just did just then. I, I yelled at my wife, God forgive me, and I repent of that thing right now. I won't do it anymore. Help me not to do it again, in Jesus' name. And I go on. I'm done with the sucking my thumb and twirling my hair, feeling sorry for myself because I'm such a bad person. Okay, I am a bad person. Okay, I told somebody this morning I was, I'm not going to repeat it, but I, that's what I was. I and mean, sometimes I am that. You know, horses rear in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I really am. But I'm telling you, the blood of Christ cleansed me from that, and he set me free from my sin. The power of God has set us free from sin. So if you need him today. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for touching us from the Old Testament, from this great prophet Isaiah. Having him write all this stuff down or having somebody kind of copy it down for him. Thank you, Lord, for, for him showing us that he, he was he, the good, bad, and the ugly of who he was. Lord, thank you for not erasing that stuff from the Word of God. The things that were bad about people and the things that were good about them, they make us understand and believe that this actually could take place. Lord, you've cleansed us from our sins. We pray now, Lord, you would help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the bag around so, you know, so we have tents next week. <laughs> I used to say electricity. This electricity is good, right? Yeah. yeah. Best kind. What? Yeah, right. Causing yeah, the women, they're forcing them to have abortions. Yeah. Um, they're they are. slaughtering them. And you know, yeah. it's, I just pray that, they, and I know sometimes people being say Muslims, they can think about their religion and stuff. We need to think about the, the, the people that yeah, God is trying to bring into the kingdom. Sure. And we really need to keep them in prayer. And people are people. We need to change the you know, whole atmosphere in China. Yeah. And we can do that, especially during this fast. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, uh, <coughs> From China, she lives in China. She ministers children over there. She saves them from slavery in, in Beijing. She lives in Beijing. And she rescues kids from slavery. She buys them and gets them out of slavery and then ministers to them and helps them and keeps them from going back into slavery. So, Lord, we cry out for those people who are being tortured, killed, uh, enslaved. Lord, we pray for those people, the Muslim ladies that are being wiped out and even the Muslim men. We pray, Lord, that you would intervene in that place. I pray, Lord, most of all, that you change the minds of those people that are doing it. Amen. Change the minds of the wicked and the, the evil. Yeah. And the, any one of them, Lord, that you can still save, I pray that you'd save them, set them free from that mindset, that awful thing. Especially the mindset of communism. And especially that. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And Lord, as we give today, we give as unto you, not unto men. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to preach the gospel in this city, in our nation. We lift up our nation. We thank you, Lord, that your economy works and that your life is real. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we got a real job to put money in. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, so, amen. That's right. Good thing. Pastor right Matthew. Oh, you want me to pass yeah. that? I have something I'd like to share. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where do we? Where does this go back here? So most of you folks know that I go to the rite of passage every Wednesday evening to minister to the young girls. They're all, um, they're all between 13 and 18. So uh, about a month ago, we had a couple girls um, requesting prayer for a young lady by the name of Michaela. So they said Michaela is a Satan worshiper and she lives in our unit. So you know they want things to happen for her that uh, God would do. So every week I was getting these little prayer requests, please pray for Michaela. So we were praying for Michaela, and one of the girls said, uh, it was about two weeks ago, said, Tony, Michaela would like to have a Bible because she wants to know what God says he'll give her that Satan can't. So I said, okay, tell Michaela to come and see me next Wednesday and I will have a Bible for her. Well, she got saved. Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. So she denounced all her belief in Satan, and she has not missed coming on Wednesday night. She's reading the Word. She's doing her little... Yeah, it's so exciting to watch. Prayer works! You know, it's amazing to see her 
see that I had not met her, so I didn't know she was, you know, the girl that had come in there, and I knew she got saved, and I was blah, blah, blah. And then they were saying, that's the Michaela, that's the Michaela. I was like, oh, God, you're a miracle worker. If you grab somebody, if you grab somebody and pray for somebody every day, pray for them every day for a month, I could almost guarantee they'll come to Christ. That's good, yeah. I'm serious. That's how much God answers prayer. Uh, we tried it before. We tried it in groups before. Me, it and, works. Uh, me and a couple people. And not, it didn't take a month to get everybody anybody saved. My whole family is saved. I, everybody in my family is saved. Everybody in Regina's family is saved. My wife and her people were orangutans. Knuckles <laughs> <laughs> dragging on the ground. You know, they were crazy people. <laughs> it's true, it's true. She asked her. But they got saved. They were calling her up on the phone. When, when is it, her uncle called her up, she says, you know, I need to get right with God. <clears throat> and she says, well, I come over to Susan Jones. He says, can't we do this on the phone? <laughs> right now. <laughs> he is nervous, man. He didn't want to go to hell. He, can we do it? Yeah, I guess we can do it on the phone. <laughs> okay. So she led him to Christ on the phone. They were calling her up all the time. This is after like a month of praying. You so, know, Pastor, after, uh, after Michaela got saved, when we do our, our time of worship, she sings the loudest. Wow. All right. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome when, to see. When you know you're forgiven much, you love much. Yes. It's easy to worship that. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so this evening, we're going to come back together to church uh, next week, uh, Friday to uh, Sunday afternoon. We're, I'm going to eat before I come on Sunday night because it's hard for me to function without eating. So on Sunday afternoon, I'm going to eat before. So anyway. God bless you all. If you need to talk to me about your soul or anything like that, come on up here. If anybody needs prayer for anything, we're here to pray for you, and that's for sure. So God bless you all.